Before going into the discussion of how to make an iBook and before we go through the features of iBooks Author, we should address the question, what's the difference between an ebook and an iBook? Ebooks have been inspired by the print book format, mainly consisting of text with images, with digital features like resizable text and being able to search, highlight, and link. But the main selling point of ebooks is portability, not having to drag around a pile of heavy books, but being able to load them all digitally on a single device, your tablet or iPad. Now, iBooks have the same features as an ebook, but if you were to Google ebooks versus iBooks, you would probably find a lot of discussion around how ebooks are so much more plentiful and accessible. And this is because most ebooks are created in an open source file format. And as a result, there are many different applications available to help you create ebooks, and there are a variety of applications available for reading ebooks, as you can see here in this partial list. Whereas iBooks is a proprietary file format created by Apple using their creation tool, iBooks Author. The resulting interactive iBooks are read mainly on Apple products. And it's worth saying that for simple iBooks that consist of text and images, you can convert them to read them with eBook applications on non-Apple devices, but it's a multi-step process and not as convenient. So given all this discussion, you might be thinking, why would I make an iBook? Well, the answer is to change your reader's experience. iBooks offers a variety of options in how you present your ideas that go beyond text and images. Each of these tools here is called a widget. And we'll quickly step through these to give you an idea of what this means. The popover and scrolling sidebar look just like additional text and images, but it's a chance to create parenthetical content without interrupting the main narrative of your book. A gallery is a way to insert multiple images that the reader can swipe through. And what's great with galleries is that you can integrate a lot more imagery without taking up valuable real estate on your digital page. An interactive image is an interesting format that enables you to overlay interactive labels on a larger image. And we'll take a look later at an example of how to use this. With the media widget, you can insert entire movies, full video audio experiences laid right within the page. Or with the keynote widget, you can insert an entire slideshow presentation that gives you all the freedoms of format and navigation of this kind of presentation application. The 3D widget lets you import 3D models that a user can rotate and zoom in on. It's an opportunity for your user to navigate and investigate a structure in a way that really isn't possible with a single image or with a self-running movie. Then for the most hardcore widget, we have the HTML widget, which gives a programmer full freedom to customize an interactive experience for your readers. And finally, there's the review widget, which is particularly useful in a textbook. It's an opportunity to include multiple choice questions with immediate feedback for your users. So now that you have a sense of the kind of things you can do, let's take a quick look at how it can change your reader's experience. Throughout this course, we'll be using examples from a project we worked on, and this was a digital textbook called E.O. Wilson's Life on Earth. And we were very fortunate because for this project, we were not working from a pre-existing textbook that tied us to pre-existing text and images that might have led us to create a book that was just text and images. Rather, we were challenged to approach very complicated biological topics with this variety of widget types at our disposal. It gave us a chance to have the freedom to explain things in a very different way. For example, when we wanted to explain the stages of fertilization, we chose an interactive image format where our reader could quickly and easily see the whole process overlaid with labels. And then he or she could simply tap through the labels or the numbers below to zoom in and learn more. When we wanted to teach the menstrual cycle, we realized there was so much more that we wanted to show that went beyond the text in the book. So we chose an HTML widget that enabled us to show not only what was happening on the anatomical level, but also on a hormonal one. 
And with so much going on at once, we wanted the reader to have the time to investigate at his or her own pace how these physical and hormonal changes were happening during the 28-day cycle. So in this interactive, the reader can simply scrub across the calendar below and see the changes above. So in comparing ebooks and iBooks, it's critical to consider how your reader is going to experience the book. If your book is mainly text and images, probably the ebooks format would suffice. But if you're interested in creating a totally different experience that engages your readers on many different levels, then iBooks is the way to go. Let's get started and take a look together at how you can do that.